Okay. Go well, for it. <laughs> welcome back to Tech Tuesday. You too. Okay, so first question is, what is the best gear oil to use after break-in and do you need anything different for dry cut two gears? Okay, so best oil after break-in. There's not really a best oil for break-in or best oil after break-in. Viscosity wise, you can choose to run like a 80W90 if you live in like a normal, you know, place that doesn't have like extreme heat, extreme cold. 80W90 is going to be thinner than like an 85W140. The 140 is going to be a lot thicker, which you don't want in like if you lived in Alaska where it's going to be freezing most of the year. You don't want to be running 140. It's going to be sludge basically for the first hour you run it okay somewhere like vegas we can get away with running 140 no problem it's hot as hell here it's gonna be thin basically before we even take off it's gonna be 110 degrees in the differential you know before we even go outside to start it up so yeah viscosity wise it doesn't make a difference to run 80 90 or uh 85 140 during break-in or after break-in. That's for a five cut gear or a two cut gear, doesn't matter. The only thing I'd say is after break-in, that's when I would put something more expensive in. And like, if you prefer to run a synthetic gear oil, that shit's like twice the price of regular, you know, 80, 90. So a synthetic oil is gonna be a lot more expensive. And so I wouldn't run that right off the bat. There's no reason to break your ring and pinion in with something synthetic just because it's so expensive and you know after 500 miles of breaking the gear in, you're going to be replacing the oil. You're trying to get all the contaminants, all of the metal, all of the break-in stuff off of that gear. That's going to be in the oil. You need to get that out of the housing, clean it up, inspect the ring gear, um, inspect the pinion, make sure everything looks clean, the bearings look good inside, and then you're going to put you know, three to four more quarts of whatever oil you want to run in your differential. Okay. So after the break-in period, that's when I would throw synthetic in. If you want to run that, you don't necessarily need to run it. A lot of people like to. They feel like they get more protection out of it. So yeah, I would just run the cheapest oil that, you know, a GL5 or a GL6. Those are like uh, oil ratings in the way that the ring and pinions are manufactured today, as well as posi tractions aftermarket and oem posies pretty much everything today is recommending either a gl5 or a gl6 oil so find the cheapest like sometimes you can just go to walmart and get the cheapest walmart brand gl5 rated oil and it's really going to be just as good as as anybody else's oil we use like a power tracks gl5 and then we also have a revolution gl6 oil that we run from revolution gear and axle uh, we just had matt on the podcast last week and yeah. uh, he mentioned their oil we carry it in the warehouse as well as the power trucks gl5 um, and they've been moving really well for us so if you guys need gear oil uh, make sure to look at that before you check out with your you know posi packages or your, your gear packages um, it's definitely a good add-on because you you need it you're going to be making a trip anyway to walmart autozone uh o'reilly's wherever you're going to buy your parts from locally um so it's easy just to throw the gear oil in the box and get everything delivered so you have everything ready to go for your swap so did i cover all my bases there gear oil before break-in or during break-in after break-in and then the dry two cut gear i guess i didn't mention the dry two cut gear doesn't require any different gear oil than a regular aftermarket five cut gear just the manufacturing process is different and the actual gear oil needed once they're installed uh no it doesn't make a difference Okay. So like I said, run the cheapest GL5 gear oil you can find for the break-in period. And then if you want to step up to something synthetic or an 85, 140, if you live in a hotter environment or something, or you're running, you know, something that's extremely heavy, huge tires, something that's going to require a lot more viscosity, um, you're going to be beating the shit out of maybe. I don't, I don't know why somebody would want to run 140 over 80 90 but there are applications where that's needed after the 500 mile mark take the oil out replace it with whatever you're you're wanting to run for basically the life of that gear you know you should be changing the oil every i don't know 50 100,000 miles you could get away with no problem on on gear sets as long as you're not abusing them yeah so um, yeah, after that 500 mile break in period, that's when you can go with a more expensive gear oil, something that you want to run long term. Okay. Awesome.